Hey, what's up, Sumolings? I'm Christy with App Sumo, and thank you for tuning in today. Today we are joined by Chris von Wilpert of Sumo.com blog fame. Chris, happy to have you. Hey, thanks for having me. Christy, I think you just turned your camera on. I think it's I think it's turned off. My camera? I can yeah. you know what? Let's see, guys. Can you see me? Because I can see me. My camera looks good. <laughs> Andre's asking me to marry him. I don't know. Maybe he can't see my camera. <laughs> Guys, can you see the both of us? Let us know in the comments here. Woo, we got lots of people on today from all over. Jan from Germany. No, you can't see me. What's up with that? Okay, let me turn it off and then back on. Yeah, I'll see you now. All right, great. You guys can see me now. I don't know what just happened there. We were just having <laughs> flukes all over the place, guys. All right. Margarita said she can only see a picture of Chris. All right. Okay, good. I think you guys can see me. Now, um, guys, we have over 1,200 people registered for this webinar. So it's going to be a party. It's the end of the day here in Austin, Texas. For Chris, it's early morning. So wherever you are, I hope that you're going to be uh, straight chilling with us today because we have a lot of amazing uh, information for you. Like I said, this is one of our most registered for webinars ever. And Chris, people want to get inside your brain and learn about the content strategy that you brought to sumo.com. Um, but guys, just in case you don't know who Chris is, let me tell you his self description. And I, I hope I don't mess it up here because this was just so good. Chris, you might know Chris as the big honking stud hustler, can do guy, winner, kick ass dude, nail e nut crushing decision maker, competitor with Keller Instinct player and heavy hitter who does marketing stuff for sumo.com that's like the best bio ever chris by the way um and if you if you don't know him by now you're about to see a genius at work all right so in the next hour chris is going to teach you all of his magical content strategies that have helped sumo.com double their blog traffic and subscribers in just a matter of months um and if this sounds good to you then you're going to want to settle in because i'm going to ask chris some of the questions that i have for him and then at the end of the webinar we're going to open up and we'll open it up and have you ask your burning questions. So guys, we are hoping to keep this webinar under an hour. So we're going to try and get to as many questions as we can possible. Um, and then I will be sending out a replay of this webinar. So just in case you can't stay until the end, it's all good because tomorrow morning I'll be sending out a webinar replay so you can catch up on what you missed or just go back and rewatch it because this webinar is going to be so action packed and full of value that you're going to want to watch it again. So Chris, I am really hyping you up right now. Are you ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I'm sure awesome. I'm ready yeah, people in the comments are uh, really excited too. Okay, so let's see. So the first thing I wanted to do is uh, let's take it back to the beginning, Chris. Uh, so have you always been a copywriter and how did sumo.com find you and how long have you been there? Um, yeah, so I haven't always been a copywriter. I was back at the start of 2017 when I was trying to get clients from my own agency that I started to do content marketing. So I just started doing one article a week on Medium. Uh, and it was at that stage um, that Noah came across one of the articles that I'd written. It was about HubSpot. It was reverse engineering how HubSpot was doing their marketing. Um, and through the promotion that I did for that particular article, Noah came across it. And then he hit me up on Twitter. And then I did a guest post with Noah on OK Dog. Yeah. And then that went really well. I was just focusing a lot on promoting. Actually, my goal with that post was to make it Noah's most popular post ever on OK Dog. Oh, yeah. Um, and so I just. Um, I just kept promoting as much as I could, kept sending Noah screenshots of what I was doing to promote it. And yeah. then Noah really liked what I'm um, doing with the promotion um, on that post. And then he asked me to come over to Sumo. And that's when I actually kept, flew over to Sumo. I slept in the App Sumo office for six months. <laughs> I've um, heard I stories was, about you sleeping here. Yes, I've heard stories about <laughs> you sleeping in the office. Yeah, just before you were at App Sumo, I was, at, I was in App Sumo and sleeping in the office for six months. And then I was walking to the Sumo office and I was yeah. working on the content marketing um, for those six months before I went back to Australia and I came back to Austin again. Um, but that's how it kind of all went down and how I actually ended up coming to Sumo. It was from me trying to just um, do content. Because I tried a lot of different things for my agency and I think maybe a lot of other people have if they're in an agency. I tried yeah. running Facebook ads. Um, I tried, like, I'd paid someone $3,000 a month to do, like, personalized um, outreach for me, like cold outreach. Yeah, I'd uh, I'd made like I was making like these ten minute videos and like going over someone's site and like breaking down what I could do to help them and then sending it to them. And you were doing that for free. Like, yeah, I was doing that for free and I was doing it just to see if I could get clients. And a lot of this stuff wasn't working. The conversion rate wasn't high enough. 
and people weren't trusting yeah. me enough. But when I started doing like started doing content and specific pieces of content, I started to notice that people like that came to me already trusted me and it was yeah. much easier to like sell from there. So that's like how it all kind of started. I, didn't, I hadn't really written that much. I didn't read about 12 posts by that stage. So that's insane that you weren't a net, like copywriting wasn't what you studied or what you've always done. So that's actually encouraging probably to a lot of people who are here today because a lot of people are busy running agencies and they don't feel like, oh, copywriting is my strength. So what did you do to become a better copywriter if that wasn't you know what you've always been focused on? Yeah, because before that I was running a snow cone business and so I was trying to get clients <laughs> for unpaid ads for people because I'd run paid ads for my own snow cone business. So I wasn't yeah. ever doing any sort of copywriting. And so I think I just learned at the start, my articles weren't really that good, but I was putting them up on Medium and I was just documenting what I'd done for like other clients and what I'd done for myself for my snow cone business. Okay. And then it was from there that I slowly, like I, I'd read a lot of other articles as well and I knew what I liked personally. And so I really studied those articles and I tried to, at the start have like a similar sort of style of that before I like develop my own sort of voice and my own sort of style. I'd like look at what I thought was really good myself and not yeah. copy it, but just um, like look at the format of those articles and how they're written. Um, like, are they getting comments? And then I try, I just kind of started from there and I just, I just read really widely and um, I just knew what I liked. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So did you bookmark all these articles that you kind of like that you like saw different pieces of that you like? Would you bookmark them and then go back to them so you can develop your own style? I didn't bookmark them, but it was more like I think early on, like you're on like a lot of different email newsletters and you're getting email newsletters from a lot of people. You're trying to learn as much as you can about marketing and online marketing and how to grow your own business and things like that. And so I was on a lot, lot, lot of things like that. Yeah. Um, not so much anymore, but yeah, at the very start I was, and then I'd like learn a lot from that. And I just noticed how they'd write their emails, how they would write their articles. And it was just, yeah, it was mainly just from that. Wow. Awesome. Okay. Wait, we have, um, some people say in the comments that you are freezing and then coming back. So I don't know if you want to like either try turning your video off and then coming back on, or maybe turning your video off and just doing audio. It's up to you, but we have, See, we yeah. still have you right here. We have that picture. Okay. So I think <laughs> let's try this. Let's try um, just the audio and see if that works because people say you kind of are cutting in and out. Cool. So um, so when you finally did get to sumo.com, did they already have a blog? And when Noah hired you to work on that blog, like what goals did he give you? Uh, yeah. So at that stage, it was um, – they sumo did have a blog. I think it was around about making about $10,000 per month, like monthly recurring revenue because we track it all through – chart mogul um okay. the revenue from content specifically um and i think there was about um a hundred or so posts at that stage the blog had been running since for about one year i think i think it was about one year the blog had been running because i came in july uh 2017 july yeah 2017 in july um okay. and so what was the other part of the question <laughs> uh, what was the goal that he gave you oh uh, yeah so this was funny i was um i was just like in china and i was just break dancing and no one was sending me messages. And then he said, could you, could you hit 500,000 traffic on the blog? Um, and I just said, yes, I could. I didn't really know if I could, but um, so that was kind of the goal to get to get to 500,000 by December. Over time, wow. the, goal, the goal changed as the business changed, but at the very start, that, that's what our goal was. So it was to scale from July to December to 500,000. We yeah. did change it like in between, but the initial goal was to ramp up from 100, thousand to 160 then 160 to 200 200 to 250 250 to 350 so it was like a a goal like that and then every yeah. week I'd have, a, I'd have a meeting with Noah so he'd kind of keep me accountable to the goal and if it wasn't on track like we'd always look at that one metric the traffic is right. the traffic um on track or not and if it's not then what what I ha what do I need to do like in the next week to get it back on track yeah um and so I was like always behind on the goal and I did I did end up hitting the the first one, it was 160K and we got it to 200K. And I can talk about that later, how we did the 100 to 200K in one month. Of course, um, yeah. And then we um, we got to 250K the following month. That was when SumoCon was on that year. And then we changed the goal later on to a different one. It was more around marketing qualified leads. Um, okay. But, yeah, that's kind of how, what it was at the very start when I first came. Yeah, I mean – <laughs> were you scared when you heard that large number of 500,000 or were you like, heck yeah, we're going to do this? 
I don't know, for me, I think I would have been so overwhelmed, but it sounds to me like you took it and ran. Uh, yeah, it is a bit overwhelming, like having such an aggressive goal, but um, yeah. no, I have like this saying, shoot for the moon, you'll hit the stars or something like that. And <laughs> it's always course. nice to have like a really aggressive goal and maybe you won't hit it, but you know, you're going to make a lot of progress by trying to go for that and you'll learn a lot by by trying to do that. Of course. Okay. So one of my first questions, thank you for giving us that backstory. That was very helpful in knowing how you got there and uh, how you got to sumo.com. So how did you, how do you choose the topics that you think will drive your ideal customers? Because that's, you know, people can, people with a blog say, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going to write about this. I'm going to write about this. And they may not be attracting the people that they actually want to sell to or want for their business. Like what, how did you go about deciding what content strategy to use to attract those ideal customers? Yeah, so I'll give some, I'll try and give some really tactical things that other people can do as well. Um, so the first thing you can do is you can look inside Facebook groups where your audience hang out and you just scroll through the feed and you look for particular questions that are particular posts and look how much engagement is on the, there is on the post. If you see a post with like a lot of comments compared to the other posts in the group, it's probably like a, a fair good chance that that topic's pretty popular with people like in that group. And so it's, it's, it's likely a topic that could work really well if you wrote about it. So um, I did this in one particular group and I saw that there was like a lot of engagement on a particular post around uh, this topic of content distribution. And okay. I obviously knew, I knew a lot of that, about that myself. So then I wrote one on it. And so that's one specific, uh, very tactical thing you can do, like going through Facebook groups and looking for these posts that have more engagement than others. For sure. um, and what people are saying and then based on what the topic is of that post writing about that particular topic another way you can do it is that when i first came to sumo there was a particular article we wrote about tony robbins and the way i wrote the way i decided to come up with that topic was i noah gave me access to ok dork analytics and i looked at what noah's most top traffic posts were on ok dork there's this one particular one he had about why i walked out on tony robbins so he Ooh. attended a Tony Robbins event and then he walked out on the event. And so I knew that that was a very popular topic um, with his particular audience in there. It, it's a very similar audience, Noah's audience on OK Dork and the Sumo audience. And so I came up with this idea where um, I'd reverse engineer exactly what Tony Robbins does in his marketing. And it worked really well, and especially on social, just because like people have really strong opinions about Tony Robbins, whether they really like him or they really hate him. And so when it comes to things like social media and promotion around social media, having something controversial like that can really like generate a lot of buzz. So that's like another way looking at your past content that's already been performing and yeah. doing something similar on that, but not exactly the same. Um, another way I'll give is like, this is a way to like look at more topics that have more organic traffic potential. So more long-term traffic potential. Um, so what you can do is you can, it's a pretty involved process, but you can do like, there's kind of three steps. You first you do like a brain dump of everything related to your, around your business and the product that you sell. And so one way you can do this is, um, say for example, I want to talk about e-commerce marketing and I want to attract more people who are e-commerce stores to the site. Um, I could go to Google and they have like this thing called like autocomplete predictions. And yes. you can just like type in e-commerce and then you can put like e-commerce space A and then it'll bring up like all these different autocomplete predictions. And so that can give you like ideas for like your brain dump. You can take ideas that autocomplete predictions come up with and you add it to like a spreadsheet of different topics that um, are related to your business. And you do that for everything. Like you put e-commerce A, e-commerce B, e-commerce C and you see what the autocomplete predictions are and you put that all into one spreadsheet and then, and then, so you have like this, this list of all these different topics from like A to Z um, related to your particular, um, the particular topic you want to write about. And also on top of that, you do even more like brain dumping. You look at like, what are some of the industry buzzwords in that industry? What are like some of like the topics being talked about on social media posts? What are some of the topics being talked about on like live conferences? So looking for like the speaker list and seeing what the topics are on, on those conferences and adding those topics as well to your list. And so then you have like this really big list of all these different keywords that you'll have, um, like all these different seed keywords. Um, and 
what you can do then is you can search for all these keywords inside um, SEM Rush to get their traffic potential. Um, mm -hmm. In SEM Rush, you can use other tools like um, AH. There's other tools that do this too, but the main metric you're looking for is like this traffic potential metric because the search volume um, isn't always a good indicator of how much, um, like you might have a thousand searches a month, but the actual actual traffic going to the article might be 3000 a month because one topic doesn't just rank for one keyword. There's like a number of different um, different keywords that it ends up ranking for. So you look at the traffic potential. So you can do that by um, going into one of these tools and looking at that metric and then adding what the traffic potential is on each of these particular topics. And then you'll have like this CSV um, with all these different topics that you'll have together with the traffic potential. And then you'll put, next to that, you'll put like the, um, the number of search results. So there's like this little metric at the, top of the, at the top of Google where it tells you like the number of search results you have mm -hmm. um, for a particular topic. Um, and so it might like be 387 million or something like that. It gives you like all the articles that have been written on that particular topic. Um, so the reason that you do that is because now you can use, you have this big list and you can start prioritizing it. So you, you use the, um, I call this like the traffic score. So you take like the traffic potential, you divide that by the number of search results and you can get an idea of like what the competition is like for, for that particular topic if you go after it and you have like a prioritized list of different keywords you can write, write about like topics related to your business um, that you're likely to likely to win for because you're prioritized in that way by using the number of search results metric and coming up with that traffic score. Once you've actually done this, um, there's like more to it than that. So you have like the topic, you have this prioritized list now and now you want to look at like what are the opportunity gaps like on the page like there's kind of four different opportunity gaps I'll look for. So one is like freshness. Um, so if the article is like, the top articles are like from 2017 or 2018, it's like one or two years before, I can see there's like a freshness gap there. Um, so that's like one of the opportunity gaps. The other opportunity gap I'll look for is just the actual quality of the post. If I think I could write a better quality post, a more unique post than that person has written on that particular one, then that's like a quality gap. The other one is like authority, just like just just eyeballing like the sites and do you actually recognize that site? Is it like an actually really popular site in the industry or or isn't it? So that's like an authority gap. Looking at like is is there an authority gap there or not? And the other one uh, is like a relevance gap, and that's like you're looking at the content and you're saying how well does it actually match the user intent of what that particular topic was on the search results. Um, and if it's not matching exactly like the, the user intent of the person searching for that particular keyword, then there's like a relevance gap there that you can fill and you can win for. Um, so this is like a kind of more advanced way of kind of like a prioritized topic list, looking for opportunity gaps. And then if you identify an opportunity cap, gap, then you start, you can start writing a piece of content on that particular topic. Um, so they're like, they're like the three different, um, the three different ways I'd like suggest and that I've, that I've used at Sumo. Yeah, no, those are great and very actionable. And I will tell you guys, um, if any of you were in the SEO webinar that I did last month with Tommy from ClickMinded, he actually took you this through this exact um, system in terms of doing the brain dump and then looking in Google using SEM Rush. Rush. I think we used Keyword Finder last month. But um, if you want to know step by step how to do that, exactly what Chris just told you, you can find that webinar on YouTube and we actually take you through the steps on how to do that. But that is a brilliant way to find those opportunities, Chris. So I'm glad you said that and it's very actionable. So I just want to recap what Chris just said in terms of finding topics um, that drive your ideal customers. His first, um, his first recommendation was looking at Facebook groups and seeing which of the posts are most commented on and which questions are being asked. And then the second was to look at similar blogs and see what they're posting about and do not be afraid to be controversial in, in your topics there. And then the third was the brain dump and using Google search results and, um, and SEO tools to actually form that content strategy to find your opportunity gap. So that was very actionable. And I know that people in the comments are going to be able to take that away. So Chris, thank you for that. Um, now, if there's one thing I know about you, you write monster posts. Like, you are a, a huge fan of long form content. Can you talk a little bit about long 
long uh, form content versus short term uh, short form content in terms of SEO and usability and shareability and all of that stuff. Yeah, so I don't usually go into the into a post thinking about how many words I'm going to write about the post. Um, I just write it until I've written about everything I possibly know about the topic and it's really tactical. I don't like trying to include any fluff inside the article. That's but very true about you. It's not something that you need to do where you need to um, write. It, like it depends on the particular topic. If, you're, if your focus is organic search and going after organic traffic, there's particular topics where you don't need to write a lot. It can be like a 500 word post. So one example is like one that we're doing on Sumo right now is a topic called it's on a, on a cart recovery email template. That particular topic, okay. you don't want to write like 2,000. No one wants to see 2,000 words on that. They just want to get the cart recovery email template and they just want to use it in their business. So in that particular example, you could write like 300 words and you're matching exactly what the person wanted when they searched for that. Gotcha. Whereas if you're talking about a more broad topic, so maybe there's another one that we're doing at the moment where we're, we're writing about drip campaigns. Um, or there's another one we're just writing about that's more even more broad. It's more about email marketing, and we're talking about what you guys do at AppSumo around email marketing. A post like that mm -hmm. would be a lot more in depth because you need to go like step by step through everything involved in how to do email marketing, and particularly on how how AppSumo does it. And so there's a lot of different parts to that, and it's not just going to be a really short post. So it really depends on what the post is. Like if I'm reverse engineering a particular company like I did with these Sumo growth studies at the start when we're trying to get a lot of social traffic. And yeah. There's a lot of different parts to those, these companies. Um, there's all these different marketing things they're doing. And so that's why some of these posts are longer. But it's not necessarily a case of like you just write longer posts every single time. You just need to – it's based on the topic. Okay, that's that's good to know because I always thought like everything had to be long form content. So that's really good. It depends on what the use case is for the, for the blog post. Okay, so – in my opinion, when it comes to content creation and marketing, I ascribe to that 80-20 rule where 20% of it is writing and 80% of it is marketing that piece of content. Do you agree with that? And what are your steps to promote your own content? Yeah, so this that's what that's how I thought about it in the past, like 20% writing, 80% promotion. Actually, the way I think about it now is more 100% creation, 100% promotion. <laughs> True, true. <laughs> the reason for that is just that if you don't put a lot of work into the post, it's not really a volume game. It's not a volume game anymore. It's like if you don't put a lot of work into the post and it's it's unique and a lot different from anything else out there. This is one of the things we do at Sumo. Like everyone who writes an article, they need to tell us what's unique about the post and they need to give us an outline of the post so I can go in and see beforehand before they actually write it um, if it's actually going to be interesting and is actually is actually unique. Um, so that's why I say like 100% creation because when it comes to distribution of the content, it'll just fall flat if it's not really unique and different from other content on the topic. And then the, the distribution, I'll go through some of the things that, um, that we do. So we add different things and we always test different things that we're doing, but I'll give some people some really actionable things they can do on their own content. Um, so the first thing is like the headline. So the headline is very important when it comes to um, – social sharing of the actual content. So what we do, it's also important for organic search as well when people click through on your search result on the actual search results page. So what, we, what we've done, what we do at the moment is we go to Amazon Mechanical Turk and I'll have the, the writer who's writing the article write out five headlines and then I'll pick, I'll usually pick one, one that I think would perform the best just like from my own experience, but then I'll write my own to go against that one and then we'll put those two headlines against each other on Amazon Mechanical Turk, where we'll pay, we pay one cent, but Amazon takes one cent, so it ends up being two cents per response. Um, and we aim to get like a thousand responses, and then we see which, which, which one do, does people like more? Is it headline A or is it headline B? And then that's the headline we'll end up using on the post. Um, so that's like a, a very like, tactical way you can like test your headlines and um, yeah. make sure you're getting like a very um, good headline that you're using on your post. The next one is a lot of people don't um, treat a piece of content like a launch, but you, what you can do is you can post screenshots of the actual article before you actually launch it. So, so like a teaser? 
yeah, it's like a teaser. Like you're obviously going to have some some sort of images in the article, or if you have some sort of video in the article, you can take like a one minute snippet of the video, and you can post that on social media. And so you're yeah, just building yeah. up anticipation for the content before it's even released, and you're just giving people a teaser of what they can expect before it comes out. Um, so. And then you can make a call to action like to, to follow you on social when it comes out or you can ask them to join the email list or you can ask them to leave a comment. I'd recommend just like having one call to action that people should take based on that, with like one of those three things. Um, and you can do that like one day before the launch or up to... Uh-oh, I think we lost Chris. <laughs> can you guys still hear me and see me? Chris, are you back yet? All right, let's see if Chris is gonna turn on his microphone, if we can hear him again. And yes, guys, we had um, we had a request in the comments to um, include some of the tools that Chris is mentioning in this webinar in the replay. So when I send you the replay email tomorrow, I'll have um, some of these tools listed out. And I'll also put a link to our past webinar so you can learn how to do that content strategy. Am I back? Yes, Chris, we can hear you. Okay, cool. Where do I cut out? After the uh, after the pre-launch stuff? Yes, you were talking about, yeah, like you were talking about um, having them do like one user conversion, like signing up for the email before, you know, in the post teaser. Uh, yeah, so after the post teaser, um, so another tactic you can use to promote the content is making a post on Twitter, but there's a little thing you can do on Twitter where you can mention people. Um, so you like to mention people in the actual tweet. It's not the actual um, like putting at whatever person it is. It's like the actual photo on the on the actual um, tweet. You can like tag people on it. So you can tag yeah. people who are actually mentioned inside the article on that photo as long as it's a photo post on Twitter. So that's another very tactical thing you can do in terms of Twitter. Okay. Um, and this is still this is still before the post is launched, correct? Um, this, this, is, this is now after, this is like the first hour of okay. the launch now. This is like gotcha. the first hour, okay. hour, I'm talking about things like in the first hour of the launch, yeah. Before gotcha. I was talking okay. about yeah, the, the pre-launch and what you can do there with screenshots and things like that. Um, okay. When it comes to like um, Facebook promotion or just like any of the social media platforms like LinkedIn as well and Facebook, like obviously these platforms like people to um, stay on their platform and not click over to your website to read your content. So one thing you can do here to make sure um, that that you like meet what Facebook's goal is, but also help you get more traffic to your content, is you make a post about the piece of content with some of the key takeaways. Um, and so people get value from the post, whether they click over to your content or not, in the actual post. And then if you just tell people if they'd like to read more, there'll be um, that, there's a link in the comments. And then you just gotcha. put the link in the comments to the actual article, and then. That can just help in terms of like the reach of the post to your fans on Facebook. The other thing is that some of these things you you may want to do on your personal profile as well as just your company profile, just because it's just a, like Facebook and LinkedIn, they just make you pay more for um, if, if it's a company profile and they give you more reach on personal profiles. That's just yeah. how it works. Um, so Noah does this a lot on his personal profiles. I do it on my personal profiles. We also post on the company profile, but in terms of organic reach on the actual post, you do get a lot more traction when posting on a personal um, profile, doing these sort of things. It does work to some extent on company pro profiles, but not as much. Another thing okay, that we'll do, do, do... Yep. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just going to go on to the, the next thing. You can ask a question if you like, if it's related to that no, one. I was going to say, do you, sure, do you do any paid promotion at all? Yeah, I'll talk about paid promotion in a second. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, and so another thing we'll do here is we'll we'll just post the actual uh, post in our actual Slack channel um, just to let people know that the post has come out. Um, but when we're running ads for the post, I'll put the link to the ad. So say, for example, we're running an ad on Twitter for the content or, and we're running an ad on Facebook. Let's say we're doing um, ads on those two platforms. I'll, uh, in, in the Slack channel with our company, I'll put the link to the Twitter post and to the Facebook post. And then that just kind of can build up like some engagement for the post before it's actually launched. Um, so people can like, comment and share on the post. And another thing you can do here is if you want to build up 
social proof on your post before you actually promote them to your core target audience is what we found when we're doing like this 100K to 200K in one month. You can actually promote your post to like cheaper European countries where it's still like, it's still targeted, but the clicks are, are cheaper. And then you can build up engagement on the post first. And then once you build up that engagement, because a lot of social media is all about the social proof, like that's going to be like the stopping power when people are scrolling through the feed and that makes them actually stop to actually start and read the post. Um, and then you can like move to like advertising into your core target market. So for some, it might be more like the big four, like US, um, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Um, and what we do when we do the paid ads is we do it a little bit differently to what um, I guess people are usually taught when doing advertising. Advertising is usually like you run three ads or five ads against each other and split test them to see which one's going to perform better. And then you run with the winner. But with content and this whole thing, like it's, it's all about like the social proof and building up the social proof on the post. And so we just go with one post and we build up all the social proof on that one post and then advertise that one post. Um, and so it depends on what your, what your budget is, like for paid advertising. Um, we've done anything up to like $10,000 on a post, but it, we don't always do that. We we do a lot less as well. Like at the moment, we do we, we make sure we're doing like ten dollars a day on ads, um, and we're always making sure that we have like content upgrades on our posts because that's the main way that we build our email list, and that's that's one of the main ways that you'll be able to take that traffic that you get from the ads and convert people onto actually your email list in a way that isn't like salesy or sleaze or anything. But you have the content upgrade that's a valuable piece of content related to that specific topic, and then people will. Um, sign up for that for that content upgrade and get that upgrade. Another thing we'll do is um, we'll post on on Zest. That's like this is like a platform where there's a lot of m different marketing content being posted and it's very highly curated. Um, and so we'll just we'll post our content there when we have um, a new piece of content come out. I'm sorry, what was the name of that website? It's called Zest. Z e s t. Zest. It's, the, okay, it's, it's, it's directly related to marketing content. So if you're not doing marketing related content, it's not the right platform to promote yourself on. If you do other types of content, um, then you want to try and look for platforms similar to what I've like Zest, but for your particular market. Gotcha. Okay. Another thing we'll do is like sometimes we'll actually post on Reddit. Um, and the way we'll do it on Reddit is really the post on Reddit is all about giving people the the takeaways from the post and the learning from the post without having to click through to the article. And there'll be like a very subtle link over to the site. Um, but it's really like all the values in the actual post on the Reddit post. So for example, we recently did a, an article about a Shopify case study. A guy was building his own Shopify store from nothing to get to $1,000 profit. And there was a, a, a particular subreddit. I think it's, um, uh, I think it's entrepreneur ride along. I think that that's what it was called. I can't remember exactly now. But it's, okay. a, it's a particular subreddit where people, entrepreneurs are in there and they're interested in following an entrepreneurial journey. And so this, this particular topic matched that subreddit perfectly because this guy was building his Shopify store from nothing and we're documenting it on the Sumo blog. So every week as we updated the post, we'd make a new post on this subreddit and it, would, it was consistently getting like over 100 upvotes. And a lot of people were actually following it on Reddit, like the actual inside Reddit natively. Um, and then it was it was driving traffic both to Sumo, but it was also just people getting value from it from the subreddit and more people just um, learning what Sumo was and what it does. So that's another thing you can do, like posting on on finding a, a specific subreddit yep. and posting. And by just making sure it's all about like the actual takeaways from the post. Um, not just like linking out to your to your piece of That's content. Scary. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing you can do is like Facebook groups. Um, and so there's two there's two things I've done like in Facebook groups. One is I've actually posted about the piece of content and a summary of it, and then I've given an, an incentive for people to um, comment and share the post in the group. So I might have posted about um, this is the topic. And then if you comment and share, I'll give you the five tools that I use to actually write about the article. Um, if you comment and share it, so giving like people an incentive that way. Because a lot of times in Facebook groups, um, it's all about engagement for your place to be at the top of the group. Another way to do it that I think people may, may like better is you can do an, like an ask me anything 
um, on the topic of the post that you've written about inside the Facebook group. So you wouldn't do these things. In, you're not just going to go to a Facebook group, join it, and then start doing this stuff. The way you need to do it is you need to be part of the Facebook group, join the community, and be part of the discussion before you do this stuff. You need to like post some valuable posts yourself that don't aren't promoting your content or anything like that. Um, and you're answering other people's questions in the group. And then at the right moment, you'll just reach out to the whoever runs the group and just ask their permission to do this. Like either if it's that post I talked about or if it's like the AMA and you just, you just so say that you have like this new piece of content you just put out um, and you'd love to do like an AMA in the group about it and just see if they'd be up for it. And so then you can make a post in the Facebook group and you can link out to your piece of content and then you can answer questions in the thread of the Facebook group about that particular topic. Um, so that's another like tactic you can do in terms of um, Facebook groups. I've got even more. Do you want me to keep going? Like I've got lots of things we do for distribution. No, I think this has been very, I think the list that you just gave them has been amazing. I think I, I wrote down at least a dozen actionable ways, but for the sake of time, maybe we should move along um, just because I have more questions for you. And I know this team, uh, the <laughs> attendees do too, and we only have 20 minutes left. So um, guys, just so you know, I will, we are going to write a more elaborate blog post on everything that Chris is talking about today. I will try and summarize it as best as I can in the replay email. So just know that um, we're going to get you this information uh, in multiple different you know content pieces uh, because this is just too good not to share so chris um what you just described is so much work right from writing the blog post to all of the dis the different distribution channels can you tell me what the con what like what type of content team does Sumo have? What does everybody do? And not only that, but you know, a lot of our attendees are small business owners. Like if they're just one person, how can they really make this work for them? So that's a lot of questions in one, but I hope you got it. <laughs> yeah, so if you don't, like Sumo does run very lean. Like at the, at the moment, um, it's me, it's um, Dean who um, helped with both both uploading articles and prom promotion of the articles. He also does writing of the articles as well. Yeah. So he's full-time on Sumo and I do, I'm full-time on Sumo. And then besides us two, there's other freelancers. And so we have like an, an editor, Kerry Morgret. And so um, we have like a person who helps out with, with some SEO stuff. And then we have two freelance writers. So our team is like very lean. Like it's very um, similar to like a very small business. We don't have like a lot of people. But if it's just yeah. yourself and you don't have anyone else, you just write less content and you focus more on the promotion of the content and you yeah. don't focus on um, just a metric of getting out like an article every week. You may just do an article every month and you don't like skimp on doing all the promotion of the article um, just because you heard that you need to write more content. You should really like focus on, like I said, 100% creation, 100% promotion and just go slower at the start, but make sure it's all quality. And so what metric should these small businesses be tracking? Should they be tracking page views? Should they be tracking, um, you know, revenue? Should they be tracking, I don't know, booking appointments? Like what is the metric that they should be tracking with their content? Yeah, so at the very start, it's you really need to build up an audience at the very start because um, if you don't have an audience, it makes it a lot harder because then you can use that audience later on to promote future content too. So at the start, it's really about building up your own audience. So you should have a metric around um, either like emails, like email leads you're getting from your content or traffic. So at the start, traffic is a good metric to, to track how much traffic you're getting to your posts and then monitoring, monitoring very closely the number of email leads that, that you're capturing from the content. Yeah. And so I talked about before how on Sumo we use content upgrades all the time and that's our, our main way of growing our email list. Um, and across all our posts, we have like a content upgrade or on, on all our popular posts anyway, we make sure we have content upgrades um, and we use them inside the actual post as like native calls to action. We have like yeah. welcome mats that appear, Sumo welcome mats. So when people first come to the post on desktop, they see the welcome mat for the content upgrade. And we also have like exit pop-ups that we'll use um, where people can sign up for the content upgrade. So that's ways that will optimize the content to get um, the, like emails, to capture emails on the content. So at the moment, we have like a goal at Sumo to go from, um, to get to like 10,000 10, emails a month, sorry, just off wow. the blog. And so what yeah. I just talked about before, those different things that we're doing with the different Sumo tools, like the welcome mat, the click trigger, and the exit pop-up, 
they're all things that we're doing to grow our own email list. And that's what I'd recommend like someone who's just starting out do as well. Make sure you have that content upgrade on your yeah. post and so that you have a very specific call to action in the post to grow your email list. Because if that's like what you really need to do at the very start is build your own audience at the start. So then you have, when you do promote future things or your products or things like that, you have an audience to promote to. Of course. So um, this was not in my original list of questions, but I see people are interested in the chat box. Like, let's talk a little bit of, more about those content upgrades because they are a great way to get email addresses. Uh, what are some of the type of content upgrades Sumo uses and um, and how can our attendees create their own? Yeah, so um, it, it really needs to be a direct upgrade to the topic people have come to read. It can't be unrelated. So let's say, for example, I'm writing a post about um, e-commerce marketing and then the content upgrade I give is about Facebook ad hacks. That would just kind of be stupid because it doesn't relate to the actual, I may have talked about Facebook ads in the e-commerce marketing article, but it was like a very, maybe a very small part of it. It wasn't what people came for in the first place. So if people came to read about this topic about e-commerce marketing, and I'm giving a, a content upgrade about Facebook ad hacks, it's not gonna convert well. It's all about giving them a direct upgrade to the content. So um, let's say, for example, I write a post about podcasts and I put in like my seven favorite podcasts in the post. Um, maybe I give people a full list of like 50 podcasts. Um, so it's like a direct upgrade. People came to the post to learn about these podcasts, like yeah. maybe e-commerce marketing podcasts. And then I've given them a list of even more that they could go and use. Another example is, um, say for example, you have a list post. So we have a popular post on Sumo about using power words you know, like your blog content and your emails and things like that. And yep. there's like 401 power, power words on that post. So it can be pretty overwhelming, like to look at all those and you want to like have a reference and you want to like print it out and use these in your emails and content. So a good upgrade for that is giving people just a one page PDF with all the power words on it that they can print out and put on their wall. So that's like a good upgrade for that particular post. Awesome. Um, that, yeah, that's like, that. that's two of them. Another thing you can do is um, swipe files. Um, so just like if it's about examples, like as a post about abandoned cart email examples or any sort of examples, you can give a swipe file of more examples. So it's just giving okay. people more of what they came for. Awesome. And so to reiterate, you believe that every blog post should have a content upgrade, correct? Um, yeah, well, if you've got a lot of posts, I recommend that you go back through your post. You go to Google Analytics, behavior, site content. And you look at what your top content is, like your top yeah. traffic content. Just filter it by organic. And then you know what what long term consistent or consistent traffic you're getting, and put content yeah. upgrades on those posts first, the top ten, and Great. then go from there. If you're just starting out, yeah, do content upgrades as well. Okay, good. So that's a really good tip, guys. Go in, find your most popular post, and at least put a content upgrade in. You know your top ten, top fifteen. So that way you can start collecting emails. All right, so I have one last question. Even though I had even more questions than this, I'm going to wrap it up because I know these guys probably want to ask you questions too. So Chris, uh, you've just lost everything and have to start over. What would you do daily for the next 30 days? Yeah, so um, I've like a very specific strategy around this, what you should do. Like if you've got no budget to spend on ads, exactly. you've got no email lists, you've got, you've, you've got nothing. Um, so at the start, it is actually very hard for someone coming into content who hasn't like written, created videos or anything like that to get started with it. So you need to like build up momentum for yourself. And so I don't even suggest you start writing a blog or creating video content or anything like that at the very start. What I recommend you do is you do, you do like, I call it like one golden nugget and you do it on your social profile. And some people might have objections to this, like, oh, I can't because my friends will see it or something like that. Or, but it's like, I used to have like that objection as well. But then when I started doing it, I saw that there were so many like referrals and things like that. And so many more people were sharing my content from doing this. But what it is, you just share like one golden nugget from what you've done that day in your own business. So if you can't, if you can start off with just once a week. That's what I used to do. Like at the very start, just posting one nugget a week. And you're just documenting what you've done that week. You just take one particular thing you've done that you think other people can learn from and you write about it on your social profile. And so you, the way you pick the profile to write it on is that you're going to, um, it doesn't really matter what, what platform is like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. What matters is that 
It's the one where most of your audience hang out on. Um, okay. And so you should take a look at like, take a look through some of your existing customers um, and then look at like the different platforms and then have a look at like their profiles and see where they, where, where they hang out the most. And then you'll be able to start getting an idea of where they, where they hang out. And that's where you should post like your one golden nugget that you talk about each day. And you should do that for like, do that for 30 days. Um, you do, it, do, it for, do it once a week at the start, then move to daily. And you'll, you'll start building this habit of like creating content and documenting what you've done. And people will start to follow what you're doing. And you'll start to build an audience on your on social. Once you've done that, then you can move into actually creating content for like a blog or a podcast or video. And it doesn't really matter which one it is, but what you should do is you should just play to your strengths. And so if you're a better better at writing, like do blog posts. If you're better on camera and on video, then like do video content. And so just like play to your strengths at the start and pick the one the one um, content format that you like doing and then go on that. And then instead of focusing on SEO at the start, don't worry about that. What you should do is more focus, I call it like industry cred content. So you're just trying to create credibility for yourself in the industry at the very start. And so... You might like do a piece on, you might do like a case study of a client you've worked with and talk about exactly like step by step what you did for them or something like that. Just to build up your own credibility. Don't worry about like SEO so much at the start and then just focus on promoting that one piece of content um, as many ways as you can, like some of these ways I've gone over just before. Um, and, and then that way you'll start, yeah, you'll start, you'll start building up momentum to do it like more regularly for yourself. Yeah, that's awesome. That is not what I thought you were going to say at all. I thought you were going to say you got to write a blog post every day and get as much content as you can. So it's very nice and refreshing to hear that you should start kind of slowly at your own pace on your own social profiles and just slowly build up that industry. Uh, content. So thank you, Chris. That was very, very helpful. Um, so guys, I'm going to go in. We only have about 10 minutes left. So we are going to answer as many questions as, as we can in 10 minutes. Uh, I apologize that um, Jeez, Chris just had such good content. You guys were eating it up that we that we went this long. Um, but Chris, okay, Peyton has a question. What is your goal for new visitor to contact to contact ratio? So new visitor to email conversion ratio. Ah, uh, to email conversion. So yeah. we yeah we look at around like two percent is pretty standard, but we look at around like four percent, five percent is like pretty good if like on a, on a post from. You'll see like, um, yeah, like from people actually coming to the post and then actually converting on the content upgrade. Awesome. So two to 4% doesn't seem like a lot. So that seems very, very doable. All right. Um, Vicky, is, who is the speaker, please? <laughs> so sorry, Vicky, if you just tuned in late, uh, we're talking to Chris Von Wolpert, who writes for sumo.com. And, um, and that's who we're talking to this past hour. Jesse's asking, can we reverse engineer? Well, hold on, questions are going so fast. Um, can we reverse engineer his old profiles? So please ask him what profile we can scan for his first content. They want to go deep into your content archives and see what you were doing, Chris. Oh, uh, yeah. So for, for like one golden nugget a day, what I'm talking about there, just look just look up me on Facebook and just type Chris Von Wilpert. And you can add me as a friend. And I'll, I've written about a lot of this stuff I've talked about as well with step-by-step -step and screenshots. So I can also give you more resources if you want me to just um, hit me up on on Facebook Messenger or whatever and you can look through the feed you can look at like this one golden nugget a day and what I do so just look at like look at what I do and see how I do it and look at the engagement on the post and how it works and especially if you're running like an agency type business or any sort of client-based business there's so many people that will just contact you without you contacting them for help by doing this it'll just like you won't seem like this when you're first doing it you need to like I said do it for 30 days and then come back and tell me how it went because this stuff really works, especially if you're an, an, an agency and for any other type of business, it just helps in terms of giving value, building an audience. And then when you have a piece of content, people are much more engaged to do it. So look at that. Um, if you want to reverse engineer um, Sumo content, you just go to sumo.com forward slash stories. Um, and you can look at all the content there. Um, yeah, they're probably the two places. <laughs> That's great. So Patrick wants to know, um, can you give an example of a golden nugget for somebody that isn't in an agency? For example, he's a wedding photographer. What kind of golden nuggets could he offer to his potential clients? Oh, okay. Oh, so that's interesting. So I'm like, I have a wedding in like three months. So um, 
I've just been looking at this guy. This guy, his name's George Wu, and this guy does um, he's like very uh, he does some very really cool stuff. So what I do for like a wedding photographer is you could do like just a one minute. You could do like when you're out like doing fittings with the customer, someone doing things with the customer, or an actual wedding. Take like a one minute video. Um, try and get someone of you. I'd like doing a video of you taking photos at the wedding and then actually upload that as like um like a one minute one minute like teaser of what you actually do on social media you're like, you're like documenting exactly what you're doing that day for the wedding and people are seeing like the wedding in progress you taking the photos um so that would be like one example um another example would just be like an actual photo that you've done um and just like how you captured that moment and then you just talk briefly about like exactly like how you captured that moment and then that would be like the nugget and that uh, yeah those are awesome yeah that's a great tip it could be none for anyone it's just like it's just documenting what you do yourself that day it's not like coming up with anything like original ideas that you need to think about forever it's just like documenting what you do awesome um so just uh so we have another question how do i find where my dream clients are hanging out on social if you don't have their social like media handles how do you know where they're hanging out Okay, um, so you need to get an idea first of like who is your who is your customer. Um, so we know like at Sumo when we focus more on like e-commerce customers, we know that it's like a, a business owner who runs an online store who makes less than a hundred thousand um, dollars per month. And then you can go and you can look at people who already have that audience. So let's say I, I find like some influencers who are in the e-commerce space. They've been um, doing this for a while, they've been creating content, they already have like a big audience, I can go and I can look at their profiles and I can go and look at where they, um, where their biggest channels are. So I can look at like their Facebook profile, their LinkedIn profile, their Twitter profile, and I can see where they get the most engagement. And you can get an idea from looking at the influences in the space, where those people are posting and where they're getting the most engagement. And that's how you can find out where you can focus. Awesome. So a little competitor analysis there. Um, all right. So Jesse's asking, where do you get your freelancers from and what do you look for when you're hiring a freelancer? Yeah. So with freelancers, a lot of the time, um, and Noah does this a lot as well. If you see where, if you read an article and you really like the article, you hit that person up to work for you. Um, so that's like the number one way I can suggest to do this. Um, because if you like the article yourself personally, and you like that person's style, and you ask them to come freelance for you. Um, yeah, that's, so that's like the number one way. And then actual platforms you can use to actually go find freelancers. Um, there's one called Crowd Content. There's one called Clear Voice. Um, so those two are just platforms where you can actually hire freelance writers on. Um, and in the past, we've also done things where we'll, um, we'll make a post about that we're hiring someone. And then we'll go through a series of steps for a challenge. And so usually the first challenge will be to write 500 words on a particular topic. And then we'll take a look. Usually at the very start, we'll even do something before that, which is a, what a lot of a lot of us do here in the Sumo company. Is we'll like do this little thing on the job description where you need to put something in the first email you send to us. Like you need to put like tacos in your email. And so that, that just filters out anyone who can't follow like basic instructions. Um, and then you go on to the challenge, like the 500 word challenge. And then from there, you filter down to like who, who your top applicants would be. Awesome. All right. Peyton is asking, what is a great way to get more comments and interaction on our blog posts? Uh, on, on social media or on the actual blog post? Is it I think on the blog post. It's, it sounded like in the comments section of the blog post. Oh, the comment section of the blog post. Okay. So in the email that you send out to people, you can give, you can, if you really want to like optimize for comments on the post, you incentivize people to make a comment when you send out, when you do the promotion for the post. So let's say, for example, it's the email, and you're sending out an email to your audience. Then at the bottom of the email, you mention, um, leave a comment and I'll pick one person to, uh, to win this prize or send this t shirt to or something like that. So you incentivize the comment, and then that's how you get a lot of, um, different comments on it. So for example, when we did the Shopify case study, we said on the very first post, because it was going to be an eight week long process, like every week, the eight weeks we're posting, we said on the, we wanted to build up social proof in the comments. So we said, leave a comment and Tim, the guy who was writing the case study, 
he's going to pick one person to send a backpack to, which is the company he was building as like a backpack company. We said, he'll pick one person to send a backpack to, just leave a comment below about what's your number one takeaway from the post. Awesome. That's a great way. Um, and I've not tried that before. So that's a good, that's good. AppSumo blog will take note. Um, so Nikitas wants to know, is it we publish more generic content for the sake of exposure rather than just our niche? So for example, she sells, um, he or she sells referral marketing software, but should that person start publishing just more marketing content in general, um, maybe to be CEO or to you know uh, attract a larger audience? Or is yes, it always better to niche down? It depends on um, what your goal is. Like if you're going for like viral social traffic, you wouldn't like niche down. It would be very hard to do that on a, like a niche topic. If you're trying to drive organic search traffic, and uh, what we find is that if you're going more narrower and maybe the traffic potential on that topic is not as high, but it's, it's direct fit for like your particular business, then that's a better way to go about it if you're going after organic search traffic because the vi visitors who come from organic search will be much more qualified and you build up topic authority on your site for that particular topic. And so that over time, it makes it easier to actually rank posts like that. So for example, on Sumo, it's a lot easier for us now to be able to get organic search traffic for topics around email marketing and e-commerce marketing type topics because we've been doing it for a while now and we've focused on that. Um, but if you're going after like viral traffic, like social traffic, you need to go broader because in a lot of those situations, you won't be able to get traction like on social posts and when you're running ads on those social posts for something that niche. Um, so that's what I suggest like there, depending on what, depending on what your goal is. Okay, great. Those were great, uh, great options. So guys, we are running out of time here. Uh, Chris, why don't you let these guys know where they connect, where they can connect with you online should they want to do that and check out your all of your social posts and your uh, content. Yeah, so just go to facebook.com, go to, just put my name in, Chris Von Wilpert, just add me, you can add me as a friend and then just hit me up, let me know you watched the AppSumo webinar and that you want like a step-by-step -step breakdown of different stuff I've talked about in the webinar. And I'll send you some of the stuff that I've talked about here. So you have like screenshots of everything. You can see how it all works um, in case you've missed anything. Because I talked about a lot of different stuff. And I know some of the stuff maybe, maybe seemed a little bit technical and very step-by-step, -step, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, just hit me up on there. Awesome. Chris, thank you so much for doing this. This was great. As I mentioned, everyone was very excited in the comments. I saw people saying, you know, saying, yes, that's a great idea. You know, thank you for this. So you did a great job. And Sumo Langs, thank you for tuning into another one of our influencer webinars. And uh, as I mentioned, I will be sending out a replay of this webinar tomorrow morning. So it'll be in your inbox then. So until next time, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you later. Bye. See ya.